this serious. Let's get serious tonight now, guys. I know we've been having a bit of fun here tonight on my cup night, but let's get a little bit serious because we got something we got to bring up. Um, Ukraine will join NATO. A Blanklin announces signaling imminent World War III with Russia. This is major, folks. And I'm going to explain to you why this is major. Because Joe Biden. Because Joe Biden actually told the truth 11 years ago. Joe Biden told the truth 11 years ago. What did he say 11 years ago? Well, he said, and I quote, Ukraine joining NATO would be an utter and dumb move that will and shall impede war against Russia. Ukraine has no place with NATO. And it would harm or what did he say? Something about harming or killing a lot of innocent people. Joe Biden told the truth 11 years ago when he said that. And if miss correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not too sure on this, but he did tell this to Blinken. Blinken. He actually told this 10, 12 years ago to Blink, 11 years ago to Blinken. Now, Ukraine will join NATO. Blinken announces signaling imminent World War III with Russia. I just wish you guys know the severity of this. In the clearest indication yet, the planet is on the verge of being plunged into another world war. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has stated that the Ukraine will, in fact, be joining NATO. The reason this is more serious than perhaps anything else that has happened yet between Russia and the West is because much of Ukraine is disputed territory. Russia controls Crimea and Donbass and the whole point of President Putin's special operation in Ukraine is to get back the rest of what he says is Russia. That's the same thing Hitler did when they carved up after World War I. Europe was carved up into pieces. Germany was carved up and, and Hitler just wanted back the Sudeten and other lands that were part of Germany and he wanted to reunite that, right? And um, by allowing Ukraine to join NATO, the West is basically declaring all of what is currently known as Ukraine to be outside of Russia's control, which crosses a very clear red line. This is intentionally starting World War III to help Hunter Biden's paymaster level of insane tweeted one X account about how insane the latest development really is. So here is the speech right here. Yes, indeed. We did uh, talk about the NATO summit and Ukraine, and we'll talk about it much in much greater detail in the coming days in Brussels, Brussels during the NATO foreign ministers meeting. As the okay. Now, I want to get to the point right here. America promised not to do this. Back in the 1990s, when former Soviet Union, USSR, fell to the United States, promised Russia that NATO would not expand any further to the east. That promise was later broken when Goldman Sachs looted Russia by privatizing much of the country, allowing NATO to, in fact, move further east. Those developments upset Putin, but up until now, he has restrained himself. That is until the latest announcements about Ukraine joining NATO. Again, because so much of Ukraine is disputed territory that Putin says is rightfully Russia's, such a move crosses a very serious red line. And the Cold War have been avoided. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. The war, the war could have been avoided. The American Tribune reported, the hundreds of thousands dead and the millions who are now refugees. The wasted resources on human misery all could have been avoided. And that's why we never took sides on any of these stupid wars. That's why we didn't want any part of these stupid wars here on the show. 
because it's the people in the middle that end up getting burned. This is so, so serious, guys, that, um, that this could even tie into something that why I said three weeks ago, something's going to happen to Biden because Biden's now reply to it was you go ahead and do what you got to do or you do was it can you correct me in the comments that something happened to biden like we predicted because now from what he said 11 years ago to today he just basically said do what you got to do or do what you can or that is very concerning now let's go over to this russian troops reached the outskirt of key Donbass city and uh Chess pieces are moving. Now, we got this important war call here. This is kind of an important one here too, guys. Uh, Israeli protesters demand Netanyahu's immediate replacement. Now, you guys remember we were covering the Netanyahu protests here on the channel since the first week it kicked off on Mike in the Night. And, when, and it went for 37 or 42 weeks. We were covering it. Then a week and a half after the last... 37th protest, I think it was, 37th week, Hamas invaded. And then Netanyahu gets cemented back in as president. He was selected back in, selected back in, but cemented. But these protests have been going on. These protests have been going on across Israel for over a year and a half now that Netanyahu, the prime minister, is not my prime minister. And they want him out. And these this is old news here on, on this channel, on Mike in the Night. This is something we have been reporting for the longest time now. And this, again, is not new news here for us on this channel. And this is a protest that's been going on. And the, it ties into the video I made, How Hamas Got Played. And how Netanyahu sealed his um, long term. And I like the picture here. I'm going to zoom into this photo, guys. They're calling him now B.B. Escobar. And look at look at that. They just B.B. Escobar. Yeah. All right, let's keep rolling out here. A little bit of war news. Top general, Israel's attack on Iranian consulate in Syria was suicide. Guys, this is not happening by chance. This is all coordinated to kick off something big. This is all in coordination for the big boy, the big play, the Hail Mary. That's it right here. And this goes back to what we said earlier. $200, $300 oil. Oh, yeah. Someone's going to get rich off of this. And Iran's highest ranking military commander says that the recent Israeli aggression on the Iranian diplomatic facilities in the Syrian capital of Damascus amounts to the regime's lunacy and suicide. So the recent missile attack on the Iranian consulate building in Damascus as a headquarters with international immunity is a kind of madness and spells the suicide of the Zionist regime, says Bakari. Bakari said, stressing that the Israeli aggression on the Iranian consulate resulted from the Zionist regime's uh, despair. So they want to. This is what I think Israel just wants to go full out hot because they, they're. They're no holds barred right now. They have to find a way to continue this. They need more money funneling in. And Netanyahu cannot lose his seat or his position that, that he was selected into. We have learned from our great commanders to determine the time, type of plan, and operations by ourselves. And this will be done at the right time with the maximum damage to the enemy. And there is there it is right there, the embassy. Iran says, Iran says reserves right to respond decisively to Israeli aggression. They are doing this. They are pushing this. And they're going to keep doing this. Right? And we just read that one. 
XM16 Chief says Brits must be prepared to be called up to defend their country. And we are we are calling a prediction here on Mike of the Night. You will be seeing a massive draft across England to wipe out the rest of the English proper or the British proper as they are being invaded by foreigners. Uh, uh, Arabs and, and, and Africans are taking over the UK as we are speaking uh, and recolonizing it as we are speaking. And they're going to basically send these young men to the meat grinder. And Brits should be prepared to be called up to fight for their country, according to a former M MI6 chief, Sir Alexander Young. Uh, uh, Younger said Britons had been infinitested whoa, since the end of the Cold War, and the government should now consider having the power to compel people to serve. Yeah, I want you. Just stopping short of calling for full conscription, he said that uh, ministers needed to plan how citizens could be mobilized. What are you fighting for? W what are the British exactly fighting for? They can't afford housing in their own country. The, the British proper, the English proper, can't afford real estate in their own country. They sold out to foreign Chinese investors. They can't afford to even... I think seven or eight million people in, in, in the UK or in England, I think it's just England alone, sorry, in England are below the poverty level. What are they going to fight for? What are they fighting to preserve? What exactly are these young men going to go preserve? Or what are they fighting to keep? They got nothing already. Like we said back multiple times in multiple videos when you dominate people with violence lies wars mischief whatever and they got nothing to lose what do they have if they have nothing to lose what do they do they fight back because they got nothing to lose and we got that from the movie fast and furious 5. watch fast and furious 5 folks listen and understand so this is something that's very concerning to me that they're ready to basically send the the british to the meat grinder is what they're going to do. And we can't, af we, we can't afford a drawn-out war. Polish foreign minister announces NATO mission to Ukraine. And the new Polish left-wing minister is announcing that he could afford, afford a drawn-out war. Again, the taxpayers are on the hook for this. And NATO member states have decided to establish joint mission in Ukraine not as a means of entering the war, but to use alliances, coordination, planning, and training ca uh, capabilities to support the war-torn country more effectively. It's basically teaming up. They could use whatever words they want, but it's teaming up. Hungary ramps up defense capabilities with construction of new ammunition plant. So tax dollars hard at work to create munitions and weapons to kill more people. And... Um, And this piece of crap, Scottish government declares words mother and father are hate speech. And when you get foreigners running your country, they start taking orders right from the top and they take the orders real quick in a heartbeat. They, if it's a European like myself running a country, like a European, old European expansion mindset that I have, and I run a country, I wouldn't be saying garbage like this. I'm old conservative. I'm not new conservative. I'm old conservative, very old conservative. And the Scottish government has declared that the words mother and father are oppressive and should therefore be considered hate speech under the draconian new rules. A uh, government funded inclusive language uh, guide recommends that words mother and father be replaced with terms such as parent and guardian. And here is the guide right here. Language guide. Let me open this for you guys to see. There's the guide right there for you guys if you want to see it. And they're, they're going to be telling us what to do, what to say, how to say it, what to, when to say it. And that's what they're uh, aiming for here. It's absolutely disgusting where, um, where they're pushing us towards.